Soon she heard Robert descending steps in one of the rooms behind the bar. He came through the swinging doors, carrying a large battered cardboard box full of plastic evergreen garland. He plopped it on the bar and opened his mouth to call to Thomas. Then he saw Hera sitting at the table. Hera smiled. Robert had grown up well, but she still could recognize parts of the little boy she remembered. His dark brown hair had receded somewhat from both front and rear, but still kept an air of untidiness about it. His jaw was square and a pair of round glasses perched on his nose. Through the lenses, those brown eyes she knew stared out at her from underneath a broad, furrowed brow. He had a manly face now, no longer a boy. She could read instant recognition in his gaze. Hello, Robert, she said, remaining seated. Then she added, You look well. Robert's eyebrows lowered even farther. There was a pause. What are you doing here? He finally asked, his voice as cold as the wind outside. I came to see you. He placed one hand on the bar counter and the other on his hip. Another uncomfortable pause. Why? Hera swallowed, trying to keep the smile on her face. She could feel the hate sweating out of him. I had some business in New York. I flew in this morning. I decided since I had the time, I would come here to see how you were. Robert bit his lip. Hera remembered when they had had disagreements when he was little. Robert would always bite his lip, and he stood defiant before her. You shouldn't have bothered, he finally said. I have a lot to do. We have a lot to get ready for. It's... Robert, Hera interrupted and silenced him. We do not need to pretend. I know you did not like me. She placed her hands in her lap. I cannot even say I blame you. I'm well aware of how much of a failure I've been as a mother. As your mother. She paused and looked at the floor. Right so far. Hera looked up at him and continued. But I am here for an important reason. A reason besides to see how you are. I knew you would do well at whatever you did, wherever you were. Robert sighed harshly. Is there a point to this? Yes, I have something to tell you. Good. Robert picked up the box and walked out from behind the bar. She now noticed how tall and thin he had become. So tell me and get out. Then we can both get on with our lives. He put the box on top of another table and began to string Christmas garlands across the wall, barely able to hide his trembling hands. Hera turned toward him. She wondered momentarily if she should tell him the truth about everything. That she was not really his mother, but an immortal goddess. But then she dismissed those thoughts with a blink. I've already chosen what is best for him to know, she told herself. Robert, you must listen to me. He pulled a handful of garland out of the box. I'm listening, he shot over his shoulder. What is it? You remarrying again? No. Dying. Robert froze. One of his arms was still in the box. He stared at the wall. Hera continued calmly. It will be early this next year. I know. That's what the doctors have said. Of course, you will receive a substantial inheritance. The house in Valencia is already sold. I did not think you'd have any need for it, and it would be a burden for you to sell from here. There are apartments in Madrid and Barcelona, but the leases will be up at the end of the month. Are you sick? Robert asked, quietly. His back was still to Hera. Yes, she lied. Actually, it was time for her to put Isabella Everard to rest just as she had retired all of her other human aliases through the centuries. After so many years, even cosmetic surgery was no longer an excuse for the appearance of eternal maturity. Before she moved on to a new life, a new name, and a new country, she had to resolve some matters. The biggest unresolved matter was standing, immobile, in front of her. That was why she had come. This was the last thing Isabella Everard had to do before she was gone to tell her adopted son farewell. There's nothing you can do? Hera shook her head, even though Robert was not looking at her. Nothing. I will die early in the spring. 
Probably when the roses are blooming, I think. Robert stood still for a few minutes. They were alone in the club. Hera could sense a tumultuous frenzy of emotions inside him, but he let none of them show. Eventually, he replied flatly, So, this is goodbye. Hera looked away. I thought you should know. How dare you? Hera looked up at his back, confused. What do you mean? Robert spun around. His face was stone, but his emotions were getting harder to keep under control. How dare you, he spat at her. Why'd you come here? I told you. Why'd you come here to tell me that? He was gritting his teeth. Why couldn't you just die over there? Why'd you have to come here and tell me that? Hera cleared her throat and repeated herself. <laughs> uh, I... I thought you should know. No, no, Robert pointed a long finger at her. You wanted to tell me so you could make me feel guilty. Well, I'm glad, because now you're going to sit there and listen to exactly what I have to say. Robert took a step forward and towered over her as she sat in the chair. I hate you more than I have words for, he growled. Don't come crawling back here expecting everything to be okay. I'm not going to forgive you so you can go to your grave with a clear conscience. I am not going to be the one left standing with the blame. He picked up the cardboard box and threw it against the wall. It hit and fell to the ground. He stopped and stood still, waiting to see what his mother would do. 